from the great state of Texas, you are now listening to Skip the Noise podcast, a rounded edge media production. Thank you so much for joining us. And by us, of course, I'm referring to Rick, aka the Brown Python, Ben, aka Mexican Nostradamus, and yours truly, Benji, here for another fantastic episode. Shout out to Mike Tacklebox for the music. Rick is not present at the moment, but will be joining us very shortly. Um, and I want to say this before we get into the uh, the topic that I was pretty pretty silent uh, last episode. I assure you. Uh, that will not be the case. I'm feeling a little <laughs> bit chatty. <laughs> so, He's so if you if, fucking chatty, Kathy, if, if you missed my uh, my uh, verbiage or I don't even know whatever, fucking you missed Your my verboseness. My verboseness. That's what I was going for, but I was like, nah, it's not a word. So I, I bailed out. But uh, anyway, unfortunately, we have to open up with a pretty somber topic: Fourth uh, of July celebration of the uh, independence of the United States of America. The celebration was. Uh, went into a uh, somber mood based on what and what happened well i mean uh, unfortunately uh, another mass shooting a individual who actually um the crazy thing about the background of this guy is kind of nuts he is a rapper or a musician uh and he actually is getting like i think they were saying he has millions of downloads of his music on spotify yeah he's fairly but- popular it's yeah, fairly popular. Like a, at least a known dude. At least he's known. Right, so right, right. He's, he's not a he's not a chart topper, but nonetheless. Well, no, pretty, yeah, I, <laughs> I definitely didn't mean like that. But you know, he's that. not like swinging. He's, Ka- yeah, he's, Kanye he's, numbers. He's, yeah, no, not not quite yet. But definitely uh, has made the most of his SoundCloud yeah. or whatever he's got. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, so anyways, this morose, sad, pitiful excuse of a used tampon decided to open fire on a July 4th parade and basically killed, unfortunately, now it's seven. So initially it was six. Um, a seventh person just passed away, um, of course, with a high-power rifle. They keep referencing it that it's similar to an AR-15, which I'm slightly confused by that concept, but you know they're going to say what they're going to say. Um, it's pretty... It, it, it's. It, it's once again where you know we're talking about the same type of shit another mentally disturbed person but this one kind of goes a little bit further because he actually was already kind of flagged yeah. so he did purchase the guns legally but he actually at 19 years old had had a run-in with the law where they confiscated several weapons from him knives i think a fucking sword um he had already been talking about murderous intent he was on a discord forum and several social media forums where he was talking about like being the lone one started posting pictures of um what of um oswald the guy who shot kennedy mm-hmm. yeah i mean definitely showing these things so he basically climbed a local business um circumvented their i guess their security get to the roof and then started again firing um he was of course he after the after the the mass shooting he gets off the building uh blends in with the crowd Walks back to his own house, gets in his mother's car, um, who, unbeknownst to her, even knew there was a shooting, and starts driving. Uh, police don't really say how they knew it was him so quickly, so that's that's an interesting thing. But they they tagged him pretty quickly, and then after about six to eight hours, he was captured by the police. So uh, we're just back. Back to the same shit again, guys. Another sh- another, ma- another mass shooting. Another very mentally deranged individual, and no one knows what to do other than try to say that he's either a MAGA follower or an extreme liberal. Yeah, and that's about where it's at. That's you know? the that's one of the parts about these things that um, is is telling of. The he's current- definitely MAGA though. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> He's 100% like, even, MAGA, even, but even though we know the whole thing's bullshit, like you know, yeah. still can't resist the uh, He's still 100% MAGA. So I throwing mean, yeah the other team under the bus, but um, yeah. either way, man, I yeah that reaction is kind of starting to piss me off with like every single uh every single event that happens, right? Any kind of negative thing, yeah. It just it, we can't we can't get past this. You know what it is? It's like in, in kindergarten or not kindergarten, but elementary school, right? Two kids fighting and the teacher breaks them up and he put them on the other side of the room and they just can't like not make mean look. Well, he did that. And he did that. Like, <laughs> that's what the fuck our country is, is, is like reduced to at this point is what I feel like. And oh, for sure. In a real way. Like that's the same. It's the same fucking energy is 
what our whole country is running off of now, all the way up to the the, the presidential level, which is oh, fucked yeah. up and sad. And not, to, I didn't want to shift. Still back to we're we're still talking about Schroeder. I had one like thought when all this happened, right? Because now we're it, the the debates. Uh, you know, every time these happen, right? It's the same shit. Guns, 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 bad guns, bad guns, bad guns, good gun. We have the right to have gun. Like it's the same cover. Oh, mental illness, mental illness. Like there's the two sides of the fence. Okay, it's both. It's it's a complex situation. We're producing uh, a lot of deranged individuals. We're also a country where, um, you know, I I had a couple of thoughts, right? And I this is what I told Ben before we started recording. I wanted to kind of get into. One of them, as I was driving, I was sitting there thinking like, you know, fuck, it doesn't have to be this way. But I was like, <laughs> is this the cost at some point of, of like freedom to where, in other words, like in any kind of calculation you could make or like scenario you could create or simulation, would it always eventually end up at this point? Like not to take it too far out of the the current topic, but obviously what I'm referring to is like the just repeated mass shootings where it's like somebody who's got fucked up ideas in their head. They're always young. They're always like at that same kind of like not child. They're not adults. Like, well, they're still child. Like, honestly, mentally, all of them are, are still fucking children. They're just grown up. So that's one problem, right? We're yeah. not, I don't think we're getting our, as a society, we are not raising our kids to be adults. They they get a prolonged adolescence. And what happens when you get a prolonged adolescence and dealing with real world situation, they show temper tantrums. They're spoiled fucking babies. Our entire culture and society is raising regardless of where you are. So I'm not even talking about a socioeconomic thing. I'm just talking about spoiled fucking baby brats who don't know how to handle <laughs> themselves in, in an adult world and seriously um yeah. and shame on and i'm not they're called they're adults right these the, the people who are committing these crimes well sometimes sometimes they're fucking kids but yeah what i mean is like the typical like if you had to average it out you know they're young adults like very young adults like just cleared the 18 mark mostly and they uh, it, so I guess, so they're adults, so they're responsible for their own decisions. But what I'm getting at here is, you know, if you're a parent and that don't take this wrong way, like I'm strictly blaming the parents of these specific individuals, but just parenting in general, obviously, right. If you work in a school, which I don't, but I kind of, at some point had my foot in that door, a job I was with was in that sort of world. They, you'll notice that like, Jesus, man, parent, like we're really fucking failing on the parenting side uh, overall, you know, as far as, I don't know. I just, at what point as a parent, do you, do you have to, your, your job is to raise kids to be functioning adults in a society. Right. And without, without going on another 30 minute rant, we're not doing it like at all. Right. Oh, it, it, on average. Right. I mean, right, yeah, right, you, right. You, got, you obviously have exceptions. You have people that do, but like <laughs> not everybody more, more that there's a yeah. huge percentage. Yeah. yeah. That are not. And I think those are fucking completely destroying our society, man. Sorry. No, I, I get you. I can do. <laughs> I I'm, wish I'm I had not. something nice to say, man, but fuck, I'm, it's, I'm, it's depressing. Well, I get you. I think. I think yeah, I, I think you're right. Like a lot, the way we're raising our gener the, the next generation to basically the and and, and I don't want to use the, the snowflake an analogy because I don't really think that's it. But rather, I think to be quite honest with you, I just think shit was really good for too long. Yeah, right. That's, and that's so now too. we're in you know so like when we were raised, um, the leftovers of Generation X, like basically the end of Gen X, we went through crack cocaine. Iraqi war and then it's just as soon as we were becoming real adults you know 9-11 so mm. it, it forged a different type of individual and I think that's you know that's kind of who we are you know it's a tougher stance it's a tougher understanding that we knew like you know anything and everything can be taken away whereas we you know the last 20 years I mean notwithstanding some of the wars we've had in Iraq and Afghanistan things have been relatively quiet and 
people during these time frames in times of extreme peace or stability, of course, will forget the worst and then, of course, find new problems to tackle and solve. And so you see like this society kind of unraveling itself based on that concept. Now, now you see society worried about like, you know, like, like, like things that weren't really a big deal in the seventies, like, you know, abortion was ruled on. Um, a lot of things are now going back to these paradigms because they're so fucking bored. They have nothing else to fight, but each other. So I think that's yeah. left this one generation completely wide open to this disillusionment that it's continued to have. And also guys, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to break it to you. A lot of fucking people took antidepressants when they were pregnant. Yeah. A lot of people did a lot of drugs. They a lot of people took anti-anxiety medications. A lot of kids have been exposed to way more. So there's there's a lot of that going on too. I mean, there's a lot of things we don't know that antidepressants, antipsychotics, these were just being given out like candy in the early 2000s. And so I think we're starting to see some of that blowback with a lot of the mental health, Ill, especially with a lot of the 18, 19, 20 year olds that you see were right products of that rampant drug expansion when it came to pharmaceuticals. And so I think we're starting to see some of that ramp up now. So it, it, there, there's, it's a multi-tier problem. And, and, and on top of that, like you said, we have a society that just doesn't raise its kids correctly, you know? Yeah. But, and then- but it, Huh? No, I, I just, yeah, I, I kind of cut myself. I had more thoughts on it, but I kind of cut my because that I don't want to make that a whole, that could be a whole. No, no, podcast. no. Hey man, but, what the fuck? Wait, we, you know, what the no, fuck but, else are we doing? No, we're talking about it, the future it, of our country. It, no, exactly. But you're, you brought up a couple of good things. One, we did have it too good for too long. And you know, you really think about it, man, like average, right? Anytime we talk about these things, you're talking about like a, in general, right? People. Yeah, it wasn't that like you didn't have to be that remarkable to make it in society. Right. You know what I mean? Like you could as long as you could show up somewhere that could give you a decent paycheck, you could probably have a place to stay, automobile, blah blah blah. Well, yeah, um, like the Michael Moore concept when he talks about like, "Hey, my parents both worked in a spark plug factory. We owned our house cash." We we had we had two cars cash and we were able to take vacations. Yeah, I know, dude. My um, like my mom, dude. They grew up like it was not you know working class family, bro. They went to Europe. Yeah, like when she was a kid, like they took a family vacation to fucking England. Yep, like when they you know, and uh, you know they had it's like typical families, right? You take that one take that one big shot, right? You save it, whatever. But like every, every time else, it was like parking on the side of the road and eating sandwiches and uh, stuff like that. But yeah, no, you're, yeah. It's like a normal, yeah. if you could, yeah. If you could show up somewhere five days a week, basically, and not get fired, exactly. like you could have a, you could have a family like now, fuck dude, you better be like, we actually brought this up last week. You almost, you gotta be a fucking, um, uh, you know, yes. Elon Musk <laughs> be able to afford a fucking car and a mortgage. Yep. Um, yep. So it's it's tough. And look who we've got joining us. Oh, the brown, sweet. The brown the python brown, is here. Brown python has blessed us with our presence. His presence. Hello, can you, sir. Can you hear hey, us? Hey, what's going hey, on? Hey, you know what? The brown python, the, the consummate professional, just getting off of work, working those long hours, still joining us here. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you appreciate his effort to get on here tonight. Yeah, What's up, man? Yeah. We're we're talking about the uh, the latest tragedy with the July 4th shooting and how society has, and this is just a quick recap for everyone so that we can get Mr. Python up to speed. We're talking about the uh, society's complete ineptness in the way they're raising children. And Ben proposed a, uh, a concept that, that basically we're just not doing it in the correct way and kind of leaving these children to be, I guess, in a Influenced. sense... In, well, not only influence, but just kind of loss. The They're society true. lost its ability to do it. And I also propose a concept that during the early 2000s, 
Um, there's a lot of prescription drugs prescribed to mothers that were pregnant, antipsychotics, antidepressants, and anti-anxiety medications. So I said, that's part of it. I think that's a part of it. And also I, I said that we've had it too good for too long. You know, we, we did, you know, where we grew up, we had, you know, we grew up with crack cocaine. That was our yeah. first wonderful thing. Uh, everything from Iran-Contra affairs, the Berlin Wall falling, sh real shit. And then as soon as we became really cognizant, older adults, 9-11. So, but since then, we had a relatively like calm period. So that's kind of where we are. Just kind of quick recap regarding this. And yeah. kind of talked about how the shooter was definitely 100% a MAGA person. And... No, it was not a mega person. <laughs> no, we're just joking. We were actually talking shit about people who did that. I was like, ah, and then as soon as we were said, I was like, oh, he was definitely mega though. But um, <laughs> but so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, what's your uh, take? Uh, my, my take is um, I mean, uh, all these shooters so far have had something in common. Um they appear to be, you know, lefties kind of thing. Oh, you know? don't even start with this. Kenosha. Like, there it goes. Look, See, there. You got Kenosha. You got, there, there you know, you got this moron here. Oh, boy. Uh, I don't oh, know, man. I, I I just got to say, you know, y'all y'all got some problems, man. Y'all. Y'all. Y'all got some problems. <laughs> and here it starts. And this is where it all begins. Um. I know you guys are having a civilized actual discussion and I come yeah, in with one of the shit. Yeah, yeah but cool. you, always, you always do this shit. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, you you add a wonderful detail. Um what what I was I was gonna kind of go also kind of going into was the fact that this that right now I think we are in a precipice of a lot of mental health problems, right? I mean, that's that's where we're stuck on. That's what we keep saying. Gun control, what the problem with this, and I think. I think a lot of people can try to say yes or no is that I think Illinois, right? This is where it happened has a red flag law. Yeah. And, and this, guy this individual red sure. was red flag, but he still, he still got a gun and he obtained yeah. it legally. He purchased it, but he was flagged. So that kind of puts into a whole count, like, well, fuck, you can have these laws, but if they're not really, you know, being watched or taken care of, you, you, these people are still going to get the fucking gun. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, you know, it, it, it's, it's an issue. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? It does not work. You know, it doesn't work. We can't, you, you, you can't, you can't put laws to stop crazy people. But here's the thing though, uh, to your point about yeah, uh, antipsychotics impossible. being given to like pregnant women. Um, Back in the what I guess the fifties and sixties, banks used to give out rifles to people who uh, opened new accounts, and they used to give it to kids. You know, yes, yes, yeah. I remember this shotguns. In particular, yeah, they used they to give out shotguns, shotguns to kids. Yes, they you did. Know? Yes, they did. That's awesome. <laughs> and nobody worried about this shit because nobody was fucking crazy. But yeah, you're right. Exactly. Maybe this has something to do with the pharmaceutical industry giving a prezolam to pregnant women for their nerves. Their nerves, you know. I mean, well, someone I, actually told me that. And I'm not, obviously, I don't want to step on over the top of two fucking pharmacists with the, the talk here, but not only like both of y'all bringing up like pregnant people take, but the actual people themselves, like they're the kids, like giving, you know, medication to the kids as well. Right. Like, oh, yeah. That, I mean, you know what I mean? Obviously, that there, part of there, it there's oh, some yeah. prenatal effects, obviously, like in birth, but I mean, just, speaking in general of the people that are committing these crimes it's a pretty large percentage of them have some sort of history of um pharmaceutical you know what i mean yeah. so that factors in as well oh um, yeah for sure for i sure. i don't know man yeah it's in other words is is to the compare and contrast to like well why weren't if you're handing out shotguns to kids why weren't they fucking all shooting each other uh well there's a a, they might not have been as chemically fucked up as the average person is today, you know? Yeah, and, and I hate to laugh, but that's probably part of the equation. But not only that, I think we have, um, you know, uh, and I, to, to take a quote from something, you know, what's uh, hard times make strong men, weak times make mm -hmm. weak men. Yeah. And so I think we just had it good for a while, ladies and gentlemen. We had a good, yeah. we had a relative area of peace and understanding where you know we actually started we started moving through progressive um concepts you know started bringing in more concepts of acceptance and understanding roe versus way was decided 
I think it was just a, a time of more acceptance. And now we're starting to go back. We're starting to go to this time where to quote a Me Too artist, the famous Marilyn Manson, where the oh, fancy that's where he goes, Me Too, man, that sucks. Yeah, the fancy fascists are about to take it away. We are in that particular zone right now. And I think these modes of violence from these these individuals are adapting to this hard swing against progressive policies also i i think it's just a there's just a lot of shit happening there's a lot of alienation and unfortunately that's where these kids are living in that's what's happening so um so and then not to move on to this topic because there are uh, we like to say once again i mean i don't know how many fucking times we have to say this you know our hearts and our prayers go out to the families of the lost and loved ones from this tragedy we pray that uh, you find peace and solace and that you know um that you understand that there's something better on the other side and hopefully you, you will find peace in that um moving on slightly we i do like i do want to quote the um the wonderful indistinguishable and infallible vice president's quote regarding this um oh, kamala yeah. harris quoted during this we've got to take oh. this stuff seriously as serious, it seriously yeah. oh well, hold, on, hold on i gotta read i'm gonna read oh, the yeah, quote let, let me, let me, yeah. calm down this, this is this the is brown gold, python's so. already peeking out of his pants um <laughs> he is, so he is. His, his quote goes we've got to take this stuff seriously as seriously as you are because you have been forced to take this seriously this is direct verbatim quote from kamala harris aka the world the word salad uh maker um <laughs> She literally said this to grieve a grieving community, to grieving parents, grieving, you know, a shell shock community. She just jumbled up shit and put it all together and delivered it as if it was going to give some type of solace or strength to this community. So he performed a perfect middle word. Uh, oh, bro. I don't even, I, I'd be quite honest with you. 10 out of 10. I think, I think she's embarrassed you. I don't think you That's, can achieve a middle word the way she did. Well, if the stakes are a little higher. I'll, I'll, I'll give her that. She's got <laughs> she's got a little bit bigger platform. Um, maybe so she, she maybe she, she's got me I on mean, that. She maybe not. I mean, in we're own, moving we're, on up. I mean, we gentlemen. can part maybe party in the back. I'll save this, but the, got my own little circle of influence and in, uh, in the in the works. Uh, but either way, uh, yeah, Kamal Harris definitely executed this middle word fucking soliloquy about as good as you can because. Yeah, it's a circular circle jerk of a salad fucking yeah, word taco. It's yeah, I, I like where you were going. Because you're about to create another <laughs> another one of those. I'm about to well, that's <laughs> I mean, that's kind of my thing. But but for her though, I think what, what I want to point out is like this is we can't, it's like we've accepted it at this point. This is the vice president of the United States of fucking America, yeah. of the most economic biggest economic power in the fucking world <laughs> oh my god i know and, and then not only that but like you not to derail it again but like by, by, look at biden's fucking bullshit uh, you know just I, I, i'm sure rick's got a few quotes in the can no. so, you know i don't even you, i don't this, even this country is about i don't even think i don't even think i'll tickle the i'm gonna tickle a sperm whale what um, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't about, know how that relates to Ukraine and gas prices, but okay, <laughs> Joe. I want to talk about the, the victims and uh, and little girls like touching my legs because they're hairy. Oh boy, that's, yeah. that's a, yeah. he this talked is, about that. He yeah, talked this about is that. Where the, the, you know, I don't think that's the fair representation. No, dude, he, what? No, I'm just joking. He, I'm fucking with you. I'm, I can't even go that long in that joke. Like, I was going to try to, but I just can't. Yeah, no, you're 100% correct. That guy's fucking off his rock. I don't think he knows where he's going. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think he's potty trained anymore. Hey, they think Trump's going <laughs> to announce sure. it in summer. Oh, yeah. Right before, you know, yeah. before the, it's gonna, he's going to break with tradition. Well, well um, hold on, hold on. Let's let's finish up. Let's finish up oh, this part, and then we'll move on to to, to Maga Waga. Yeah, we're going to the yeah. to the July to the July Fourth uh, shooting. But um, but yeah, once again, so no 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 one's gonna do anything. Uh, the proposed legislation is stuck in the water. Um, no one's no one's trying to do anything. 
Um, How's this? legislation? Didn't the Senate pass a resolution or something or some sort of? Yeah, vote? but it's not going nowhere. So it has to get to the House, and with the midterms coming, no one's you know Republicans are going to stalemate as long as possible because they don't have to do anything. Um, nothing's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. No shit. No, no one's going to change anything. We're going to be stuck in the same fucking situation. And mind you, as much as a gun enthusiasts as i think most texans are at some point you do have to start thinking maybe if you're going to have laws like red flat laws these laws that you champion to protect yeah. people perhaps we should really make sure that they're implemented and they're not and they're not just they're just not. like immigration laws we have them but no one i knew you were going it. with that but you know there's a, i mean there's, there's a bunch of other laws there's there's laws against uh oh, vandalism of federal property you should oh, we're going to talk about some law. we're going we're to talk about some laws that are apparently going to be overturned by the supreme court but it does um, okay <laughs> but but moving on moving on and let's get you know we pray for the for the victims and for the for the families and uh it, it's just not a laughing matter it's very sad once again it's just fucking sad we got to keep doing this shit um you know it's just it's just fucked up this is fucked up and then we have just an inept government that makes word salads and pps and poopoos in front of people and and they can't even fucking do a real press conference from like parts of the white house because maybe they're just not there uh, like it's too far away from a bathroom so they have to use a fake sound stage <laughs> It's yeah, just hey, did you see um, so it's real. So, it's real. It's real. It's don't even. Oh. No, no, I was just gonna say, that, yeah, they, they don't actually record in the Oval Office. Nope, because it's just you not know, with, close enough to the PP one. With Kamala Harris, it, it wasn't just the word salad, but previous to that, she was given some sort of um, some sort of conference in New Orleans, and they misspelled Louisiana in the background. Oh, it's in okay. Louisiana. Oh, I heard about oh, it. Yes. Fuck. Yeah. That's harsh. Yeah, that's, that's what harsh. happens that when is... you when your staffers uh, walk out on you, man. I mean, yeah, and, and you oh, know what? Speaking of staffers, speaking of staffers, I think that's a good turnover to our the new White House press yeah. secretary. Oh. Um, I think I think it's about time we have a discussion regarding people not qualified for things. And oh, what do you mean? I, keep, qualified. I keep forgetting her name. I keep forgetting her name. Hold on, hold on. I don't know why. Jean Pierre. Jump Jean Pierre. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Well, I think she is qualified. I mean, first off, she's gay. Oh, she's boy. black. Oh boy. Um, she's <laughs> a minority. Know. Exactly. Right. <laughs> oh, she's an immigrant. Going. Okay. Um, hold on, of course, hold she's on. qualified for this job. Now, what are you talking about? Hold on. She is Karen Jean Jean Pierre. Um. So, as as my esteemed colleague has already labeled off as much as possible. I mean, but. The reality is that she's not. She is very, very in, un, like she's just yeah. She's very inept and unqualified for this position. I think during say? a well during, during a White House press conference, when they asked her regarding a certain topic, she pulled out a binder and flipped through pages for I think roughly two to three minutes to find an answer. If you're the fucking White House press secretary, you're the voice of the president, right? You're like the Megatron. If if anyone knows, the Megatron's the voice of God. You're not you're not supposed to be filing through fucking things, right? You're either gonna be like Jen Saki and just have no soul, which gingers don't, and just spew <laughs> shit. Or you're gonna be like you're gonna be like Kaylee Mac McInerney, like wiping off the stuff from from her her last visit with Trump that's all over her face, but at least she retorted correctly. At least she retorted oh, correctly I mean, after getting handbook. blasted in the face. But mm -hmm. this particular press secretary has been a complete and fundamental fuck up, even so much that I believe that now she is no longer allowed to be on stage by herself. They have another, um, I, I don't know where all of this is, but it's it, the people are starting to, starting to talk about this. I forgot his name. But there's another individual who joins her on stage now that basically lets her kind of take the softballs. And when things get hot and heavy, he kind of pushes her to a side. So there's been some controversy saying that, you know, the first black LGBTQ um, press secretary has now been set up to fail. Like they got the worst one so that, you know, they can bring in another white male to be the press secretary. Um, 
So, well, you know, you know, they brought in the white male um, to mansplain, really. Um, well, <laughs> to the press, you know, he's <laughs> he's going to go there. He's going to mansplain all the stuff that Jean Pierre cannot ex- explain. So that's what he's there for. He's gonna, he's going to mansplain it to to Jean Pierre too. So boy, that's what's oh happening. Boy. He's, you know, I if he were to sit down, he would he would just sit down with his legs spread. You know, oh boy, and, um, oh, mansplain the whole nuts. thing. Let his <laughs> swing around. Oh, boy. But I, I, obviously, the, the the problem here is that it's it's nothing against you could be what if you're qualified for a job, you could be whatever fucking category of people you could possibly be. Doesn't matter. But the problem is when you're selected based on those categories and not your actual uh capabilities to perform the job being being required of you, this is what happens. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think, I think, okay, so look, I think, and, and, and it to be some, I mean, like, look, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for, um, what's it called? Um, ah, what's that um, shit called? For who? Like Trump? For, oh, something? yeah. Uh, for, um, you know, what's that stuff called when they laid, when they let Mexicans uh, and, and affirmative Latin, action? Yeah, affirmative mm-hmm. action. I wouldn't be here. For sure. Like my, my, my parents, very, while very smart, came from this country, from Mexico. They didn't really learn English until 12, right? But they were able to still go to a go to college and go to pharmacy school and law, law school, you know, both. But they bombed standardized tests. But they were, they, but they were A students, you know, like my, my father made all A's in law school. Like, he was graduated number one in his class, but standardized tests, which were a big barrier to most minorities, especially any minority that didn't grow up in the United States, was a problem. So affirmative action to me, yes, there was there's definitely some loopholes and there's definitely some ways that let certain people in. And I, I think giving people opportunities is important. For sure. But my father could still get all A's and lost. Right. Right. He just couldn't take a dumb test that was biased already off the bat, which now you're starting to see a lot of schools back away from a lot of standardized tests. But nonetheless, that 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 to that to try to put the basis down. You don't have to take every box. You just need to take the box where the person is very good. I mean, there's probably plenty of of, of black females, black males, um, you know, it, it, whatever you want to say that could have handled this job versus this particular person who looks completely inept there's probably thousands that, that millions call a problem i mean dude there's there's some fucking like there's some 13 year olds right in ap english that could handle the job better than she did so it's just it's just once again kind of shows how this administration is really just playing up to these ridiculous expectations are not even expectations, but just trying to make themselves seem like there's this, I, I don't know. It, it's very it's hard to explain, huh? It, it's all inclusive. Cosmetic. Well, beyond well, inclusivity, I think this goes beyond inclusivity. I think this is almost. It's like, fake inclusivity. It's, exactly. It's, it's, it's posturing. It's, 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 uh, yes, yes. it's posturing. That's, that's, the, yes. yeah. that's exactly what it is. That's the problem is like the focus. Yeah. If you cut to the root of the entire thing, the focus is the posture like he said, and not the actual fucking work that needs to get done. Exactly. Like, yeah. The, all the focus is on the presentation. That's maybe a better word. Yes. The presentation, the importance of the presentation out far outweighs whatever you're trying to produce or results you're trying to produce, you know? Yep. So, I mean, yeah. you're telling me you couldn't find a, a gay black immigrant good press secretary? somewhere in this country you know well, well I, I mean i, I, I think that's what it, they were going for and you look, know what it, it goes to the it goes to the way that, that they picked kamala harris as vice president too oh well that was just a i shit mean show. you know that was also posturing she right. was nowhere near qualified but they wanted the first female black vice president well, and they okay wanted that so oh, bad. Hold on. calm down on the qualifications no, 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 dude, because I'm trump you. And that wasn't qualified. What? He can't even run it. He, I don't think qualifications no, but, play but into it. Trump didn't pick Pence because he was like the first old white guy to be vice president. That's not what he picked him for. He picked him because he, had, he was qualified. No. 
Cosmo. I in his eyes, that. he was. I mean, well, I wouldn't say that necessarily. But okay, but I get you then. Continue. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Kamala Harris was picked out of out of posturing. Also, I mean, they they were trying to pander to a certain demographic, and they picked this lady, who can't even speak. Who's <laughs> She, I mean, can she's, speak, I understand. she cannot speak uh, a coherent sentences without repeating herself uh and what's her excuse anyway you know well, hold on excuse but, is he's old but her excuse is you know she's just not qualified well maybe well, hold, on, hold on maybe you know what it, it okay you know how every once in a while you you throw something out there and then it sticks on the wall and then you realize what you said is kind yeah. of like the truth who in this administration can actually speak correctly Maybe like they got they couldn't take Jen Saki because she could form straight sentences. So they yeah. found someone that communicated and say maybe she is Dude, actually the, the best f- representation for a non-commutative, evasive, and completely disillusioned um uh you know administration executive or administration. Yeah. Maybe she actually is the best choice. Maybe we're all fucking wrong. Maybe they had to find someone that was as I mean as shitty right. as they were communicating. Maybe <laughs> because the person who could communicate didn't know what the fuck they were saying anyway. Exactly. So think about it. These are the same people that are hiring people, right? Like, like, like when she right, talked, Biden yeah. was like, "Oh, that's a good se- that's a good sentence," and so is Kamala Harris. So maybe in the end, dude, the real problem doesn't lie in the fact that. They were trying to help anyone out. They just had to find someone who was as shitty as they were, which probably took a long time. Damn. Do you know how so long it took to do that? It took probably so they don't get outshined. Long. Exactly. Because if and if if Kamala Harris, who is reasonably young, can't even form a fucking coherent sentence, you can't have the White House press secretary. She is the you know what? She is the exact representation of this administration. But here's a okay, I got my opinions about Kamala Harris. I think that they muzzle her too much i think she some okay when she speaks it doesn't look natural it doesn't look like she like those are her words and i think if she were to say something honest um i think she would Ooh, she good. she would come off as a little bit more genuine she would come out her said her statements would come out you know more coherent but i really think that somebody is pulling the strings and stops her from saying what she really wants to say that's actually a really good take, man. Because I I could see that. Because like, obviously natural. she was more of right, and like obviously at some point in her career she was say what you want. I mean we shit on her all the time, but like at some point obviously in her career she's said things right that like ushered her into the even get the opportunity for this position. Like exactly. you don't just end up here, right? Like as stupid as Biden sounds now regardless of what you think about what he said, he, you know what I mean? He's been in the political game and at some point made the stride. Like there was a version of Joe Biden that regardless of his opinions and stances was able to get to that. I think uh, Benji cut out. Yeah. I think, I think we got a little bit of a technical difficulty with uh, Benjamin James, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think, what, what do you think? I mean, where are you? Oh, I mean, I, that's I, what I, that's what I'm thinking that, man. Like she, she's being muzzled somewhere. I, I think if she is someone were to say, Hey, say whatever you want, be as honest as you want. Right. Um, she would come off as a little bit more genuine. I mean, if she, if yeah, she but, but, the problem say, was, hey, but remember her during the debates yeah. though? What about her? Remember during the debates, she sucked. Yeah, she, she I don't terrible. think she's a good, if, I, don't, I really think, don't think she's a good, I mean, she got beat by Tul- by Tulsi Gabbard, and I know as much as everyone tries to suck her balls, she's not very good of a, a speaker either. No, she's not. She's yeah. kind of shitty. So she's just better than Kamala. That's all. Right, right. So basically, the C team beat the supposed A team, and I, I just think that Kamala Harris is just not an effective communicator either. I, that might really be the reality is that they just found someone like them which probably took them a while to find someone that <laughs> shitty i mean it's 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 kind of magical now that this is kind of come you know how sometimes when the snake yeah. ends up beating the tail that's where i'm at right now cuz i'm like oh well really they did find the best person to represent this administration because she's shitty like they are it's magical it's magic i just had a realization 
Hey, do you think right. Biden runs twenty twenty four? Because it seems like like the media is giving that mixed messages, and Biden is saying something else. Biden oh. saying, "I'm going to run," and then the media is like, e- "Sure, yeah, okay." But what about this person? What about Gavin Newsom? <laughs> You well, I, I I like where this is going because I actually did post a, a nice little stat. Seventy. So to kind of just preface this as we roll into yeah. this topic, seventy one percent of people polled do not want Biden to run for president again. Now I will also post this against the fact that sixty two percent of people do not want Trump to run again. Yeah, well, these are all real numbers, um, and actually varied polls with actually pretty statistical bias so these are the ones that also kind of started hinting the fact that hillary was losing to trump so these are actually pretty valid polls so with that being said so you're saying that um in the term (laughs) nobody wants any of these three people to run but (laughs) they do not it would be trump first hillary second and biden last oh i actually think i think the only person hillary clinton could beat right now is biden as you've also noticed there is talk. Yeah, but I don't think she will. The snook might come in. And this snook, <laughs> the, sno- the snook, remember? Uh, South Park did a, uh, South Park did an episode of Hillary Clinton where she had a, a nuclear bomb in her vagina. They called it, his, <laughs> <laughs> they called it <laughs> <a> snook. <laughs> so I can't, I, every time I see Hillary Clinton, oh. I just think about her. With the snook, and then like someone oh, like dude, the first South Park the, is amazing. The <laughs> first guy who tried to go in there got like eaten alive by her um, <laughs> vagina, and like like you just see his body being torn apart. So like they had to like send to, like a like an outbreak team to deal with it. Um, but her name is in there, and just like Rick just mentioned, Gavin Newsom, right? You got DeSantis, of course, for the Republican Party. You have a lot of names being thrown <laughs> into this hat. So Snooker <laughs> could do this, dude. You know but, what's happening? Oh, so go ahead. That, Rick. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I just a real. This is just a quick. Like the boomers are holding on to this whole mechanism with the fucking white knuckles, dude. Yeah, like that's sure. what it feels like. Well, I mean, but what about you got DeSantis? You have Newsom coming out. These are Fuck, these are yeah. Gen X guys. These that's are true. our that's generation, true. right? So Eventually, ahead, we'll it ha- but that happened dude like yep. at some point like oh yeah we can't have these uh I, once again i'm about to go on but anyway go ahead rick i'm sorry I was- no no i was gonna say i mean yeah i mean you got the nancy pelosi's who are hanging on for dear life on this one she's not gonna leave man she's gonna die in office yeah but but we are seeing though large large numbers of people saying that they do not want these individuals to run the question is is Will this be enough to push the DNC and even the GOP into our, you know, moving moving away from these candidates? Because you, like you said, the media is already starting to trump stuff up. Even Fox News, oh, pardon the pun, even Fox News is like, oh, mm-hmm. DeSantis, I heard he had a 14-inch cock. And, oh, Gavin Newsom, he slicks his hair back and he's really popular. Do you think that, I think they're already trying to find the replacers for these guys you know yeah but it's it's more than than just that i mean you have um jerry nadler who's still in power you have nancy pelosi who's still in power you've got um Mm -hmm. uh, barbara boxer these people won't leave get the fuck out already i mean you got mitch mcconnell you got mitch mcconnell you have a lot of people that have 20 25 years plus you do have a lot of these people in there but they need to leave, man. Do like you see? But do you see, like a um, during um, Clinton, whenever Newt Gingrich came to power, Speaker of the House, uh, you saw a what they called like a Republican, basically a they called it the, the freshman revolution, right? Ninety seven Republicans, new Republicans were were elected to the House that year. Do we see a overall party refreshment? Right? Do you perhaps see Nancy Pelosi lose? Do you start seeing no. that there's the end of some of this party establishment? Well, I mean, right, right. Typically, no. But are we now getting to the point to where maybe the United States is kind of getting tired of it, especially with this crazy inflation? Sure. Fuck you think? Right? But yeah, you're counting on Californians to vote uh, 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 you know, on their interests, on their well, best interests. San Francisco, 
San Francisco's already booted out. What was it? it was three of their city council members and that uh, were being ultra progressive. They kicked them and the prosecutor. out. And, yep. And San Francisco is pretty fucking progressive, bro. I think it's, it's like, some I mean, pro- progressive. Ca- it's the capital of exactly. So you're already starting to see that happen. You saw several MAGA MAGA backed um, candidates in the midterms for the GOP lose against more establishment, more Republican, Republican, Republicans, in a sense. I mean, maybe that's where maybe that maybe that maybe the the refresh is starting. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, for maybe, me, that's kind of hopeful. I'm I'm kind of hopeful I, that maybe people actually just say fuck it and refresh the whole thing. I think we have Probably. to. I think we're yeah. at that point. No. Yeah, I mean, and Barbara Boxer doesn't know where she's at half the time. And she's she's a yeah, U.S. senator. <laughs> I know. It's fucking <laughs> no, so sad. It's yeah, we have these <laughs> geriatric shits his pants. You know, yeah, that's who's. I mean, that's the thing. That's who's in charge right now. Exactly. It'd be. It'd be like if you're. <laughs> this is fucked up. It'd be like you know you take a family trip and shit. Uh, it like if you put like, great grandpa in charge, of the whole shit. Oh right. Like you don't even like let grandpa, that motherfucker drive. Yeah, grandpa. Figure, where are we staying again? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh, oh, I forgot. So sad. Yeah. Oh, you know what I would like you, to do? Like that's that's what it is. That's you know so what my funny. dream my dream job would be? Oh boy! Uh, oh, please, to please. be a pharmacist at the Capitol Pharmacy, because oh. you know they have their own pharmacy at the Capitol yep. to prevent um, things like you know the Tam- medical conditions getting out yeah. or tampering. Oh, oh, but imagine how much that pharmacist knows, man. Oh, like who dude. takes what? You know? Oh, who's, who's, a, who's on Alzheimer's meds? They're leaking that shit out left and right. I don't know. They're, they're, they're not leaking you. it out, man. I'm they're not because you would hear sh- about it. Well, no, no they're military. They're, they're military. I think yeah, they're pharmacists. They're military under military contracts. I think. I, I'm, I don't know for sure. I think they are. They're, well, no, yep. they're probably like VA type things. Um, but yeah. I mean, you probably end up like Jeffrey Epstein, you know, oh, uh, after you. No, after yeah. Finish, no, I, I, you know, that's a, that's interesting. Epstein was natural. Okay. That natural causes. <laughs> yeah, that was natural causes. No, but yeah, yeah you issue anything. Who, whoever those people are that that issue those out, yeah, they're not even a real person, basically, because I'm sure that the tentacles are so far into their fucking like every text they send. You know what I mean? Oh, they, for I sure. bet they are under like they're inside out as far as fuck surveillance. They're like oh, yeah. basically an X-ray, like there's a motherfucker monitoring this guy's heartbeat on an iPhone <laughs> oh, 24 wow. hours a fucking day. Like they work in shifts and they have government contracts to monitor this dude, every single text, every single <laughs> email, pharmacist. every single social media post, every single. Yeah. I guarantee you. And as soon oh, as like, if he stepped man. out of line, he knows there's like 60 guns pointed at him. Yeah. No, I, you know, I would, I, I wouldn't disagree. They probably, they probably don't even live in this dimension. As soon as they get out of work, <laughs> they put them in the I'm upside saying, down, dude. right? They're, they're being chased by that monster yes. all night long. And then as soon as they get, as soon as it's time for work, they're fucking pumped that they don't have to get chased by the upside down monster. <laughs> or, or either that dude, they just, they dehydrate them at the end of the day, like fully, oh, like yeah. into like NASA, like NASA ice cream. Yeah. And then whenever eight, like seven in the morning, when it's time for them, they to drop some water on them. scripts, they put, put them in water. So you read <laughs> There was some funny shit. There's a fucking book called The Three Body Problem. And it actually, yeah. there's a civilization that can't <laughs> comprehend because there's like three stars. You know, that's the big, yeah. uh, anyways, that's the big mathematical issue. And so they would dehydrate the whole society whenever the, <sighs> the other stars eclipse because it burns the surface. So they're like, dehydrate. <laughs> like, that's what they do. These awesome. fucking like, these poor pharmacists that I, I'm not applying for that job. Um, but <laughs> that's Rick's dream job, though. Yeah, it's my dream job. I don't think he but, thought it through, though. No, he did I think not. we, I think we proposed a case that might uh, have him thinking uh, otherwise. I don't, I don't think. I, uh, I think in this one, the benefits do not outweigh the cost. <laughs> um, but moving on from a inept government to another interesting thing. Um, so Pfizer's COVID pill, ladies and gentlemen is now being proposed to be dispensed directly by a pharmacist. So very much like if you were to go to CVS or somewhere and then basically 
you know, as for plan B or some other form of medication, you don't need a script. The pharmacist can assess at that point. That's what they're suggesting for this new Pfizer pill. Wow. What the fuck? I mean, A, I, there's a lot of pharmacists that are going to be happy because I'm guaranteeing you that there's going to no. be some job security for a while. Mm-hmm. But then also there's a lot of pharmacists that are miserable because they're about to get fucking slammed for the next yep. two and a half years until people just give up on COVID. Now, well, I guarantee you the business at the CVS in um, DFW versus the the the, the CVS in, uh, in New Jersey, you're going to see a pretty big discrepancy in the amount of COVID pills dispensed. But this is real. This is pretty crazy. There, it's going to be a direct dispensing model. So what do y'all think of that shit? Uh, man, uh, it's <laughs> Pfizer. And they've spent a lot of money on these pills. And they don't want to be hampered by prescriptions, by pesky doctor-patient relationships <laughs> and prescriptions. So they just don't. Up, they spend so much money on this shit. They're going to get this out as soon as possible they were to the highest bidder. Uh, um. I don't know, man. I mean, if that was the case, why don't they make um, Tamiflu, you know, over the counter like that? Right. You know? sure. No, this is very true. This is very true. And 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 guess what? Why why this one? Yeah. You know, it doesn't make any sense. Well, I know. Well, I know why it makes sense because Pfizer paid for it. Um, but no. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> There's well, a bunch of other drugs that they can make over the counter like this that, that are way more helpful. Well, just I to mean, quote. To yeah. quote what, uh, so this, the name of the drug is Paxlovid, which is a nermitilavir. So it's antiretroviral and ritonavir tablets. Um, so possible side effects are hives, trouble swallowing or breathing, swelling of mouth, lips or face, <laughs> throat tightness, hardness, and skin rash. Other part, liver problems. Tell your health your healthcare provider right away if you have any of these signs of symptoms of liver problems, loss of appetite, yellowing of skin. Resistance to HIV meds. If you have untreated <laughs> HIV, Paxlovid may lead to some of your HIV medications not oh, working. Hell no, man. Other possible <laughs> things. Altered sense of taste, diarrhea, high blood pressure, and muscle aches. These are all possible. Um, no. No. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not going to take any part of this, man. You have to. You're going to no, have to. Some dude shows up with to. AIDS and he's like, hey, man, my AIDS medication is not working. What happened? I'm like, go see your doctor, man. What the hell's your problem? <laughs> well, no, you, sir, are the trusted individual to be dispensing. Yeah, you gave me these pills. Pax limit. So, yeah, this is this is the real deal. So, it's almost amazing now. I think at the level of, I don't know. Oh, I just, man. it's this, it's this, yeah. This is I'm starting to get to this. be magical. Well, I think this is starting to get magical. It's amazing now that it's like, okay, now they can't, you know, and I'm not, I definitely am not trying to say, I think to try to be as fair as possible, very few drugs of this nature are allowed to be dispensed straight from the pharmacist in such a quick time frame. right? Yeah. It's just very quickly. I mean, this is the first step to possible OTC. Sounds, Which yeah, for people course. don't realize it's just straight over the counter. And that's what it's going to be because, you know, these, these CVS pharmacists or these Walgreens pharmacists, they're so inundated with work and, and poor help that they're not going to be able to make a true assessment as to whether or not this patient oh, really yeah. needs it. Oh, my God. They're going to be like, here you go. Click here. You give it to the give it to the cashier. She rings you out. You're yeah. out the door. Oh, and then let's not even think about the possible billing aspects of this. I mean, let's say this is covered federally now. Of course, you know, now you have you're having to deal with people having to actually process these process these orders and then basically do the billing aspect to the government. This this is just I, I don't know. I don't know how to I mean, I do I I don't know necessarily how to feel about this, but I do think that this is this is once again we are moving at light speed with these, with these particular type of treatments and medication. Whereas most of the time it is at best a crawl, you know what I'm saying? For the advancement of medication usage. So I'm, I'm very shocked. Best. Yeah. Best a crawl 20 years. How how many years was Nexium? Um, prescription only before it became over the counter. Oh, it was, it was like 10 years, 12, 12 years. And then they went over the counter, but there was ex- 
extensive studies. And yeah. to be quite honest with you, it should never have been necessarily a prescription because it was always, I had such great OTC, com, you know, ability. It, it, it had such a small side effect profile. So they made their money and then, you know, finally put it on the, all the counter. But now they want to just fucking do this with COVID pills. These are antiretroviral medications. These aren't fucking, this isn't fucking halls, you know? Dude, the, the, yeah. This isn't Sudafed. It's not even, um, what is that shit? The, uh, the allergy medicine that you oh. have to get over. Yeah, Sudafed. The... Sudafed. Well, this Sudafed, isn't... but there's yeah. the Allegra, Zer- Zyrtec, or whatever Zyrtec. that is shit. Yeah, Z- yeah. The super parent Z- Zyrtec or whatever. Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. This isn't that shit. That. Nope. This is an anti retroviral. Hey, you know what I always wanted to, to use because uh, it was right behind the counter? <laughs> uh, penis pump. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, syrup of Epicac. Remember. Oh, man. Wow. Huh? Which one? Syrup of Epicac. Oh, my that. God. I've, I've, you always know, wanted, that... I've always wanted to use that. I mean, Dude, I'll, just try it out. See if it works. Oh, yeah. Well, you um, end up like Family Guy. Remember that fucking episode? <laughs> From Benji, that syrup of Epicac, what yeah, that what is, it, is that? it came out of the episode of Family Guy where <laughs> Stewie and Brian will, will take a <laughs> swig at it and they'll start vomiting violently. To see who could have the last piece of pie, because there's one little piece of pie left. So like, okay, it's a great piece of apple pie. So uh, oh, let's wow. all chug a bottle of epicat, and whoever throws up first, whoever whoever makes it the longest out throwing up gets to have the pie. And they all go into this outrageous explosion of violent throwing up, where they're like crying <laughs> and rocking all over the floor. And mind you. There's a the big story regarding that one was that me and Rick, a long time ago while in school together, this is whenever the internet was first kind of big on college campuses. I had found a way to hack into the little uh, network. I got my cable, plugged it in, got past the little barriers, and we would watch. We watched that during class one oh, day. Man. We were laughing so hard we had to walk out of class because the teachers like. What are you doing? I Rick's like hiding, like crying, <laughs> laughing as we're seeing this, like this throw of scene. Dude, that was one of the <laughs> funniest fucking things ever. But yes. It's a lot funnier when, when you can't laugh, you know, because you're in class. Oh, so exactly. You hold it in, man. It's <laughs> you ridiculous. Had, you walked out and I started laughing harder and you're just like, shut up. Dude, <laughs> some of the best fucking times. But yeah, so this isn't Epicag. This isn't Sudafed. This is a experimental antiretroviral that they now want to give all the liability to the pharmacist to dispense. No, nah, man. I ain't gonna touch that shit. Mm-mm. Ladies and gentlemen, um, coming to a pharmacy near you. Brand new COVID pills. But we're gonna go ahead and take a little break, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're gonna kind of rest the heels, take a piss, um, and then yeah. just kind of come back with something fresh, something new. Maybe blue. Maybe borrowed. Who knows? and we're back party in the back underway uh real quick before we get into the first topic a party in the back i just want to give a special shout out we haven't done those in a while uh jasmine st Clair. she was a guest on our program episode 88 i think it was made her name in the uh, adult film industry does some pro wrestling stuff still involved pro wrestling still acts um but you know as in recent years has gotten out a bunch of she's got her own podcast um but you know, likes to talk politics. Was a lovely guest on the show, so shout out to her and her podcast. Um, anyway, again, go back if you would listen to episode eighty-eight if you're just new to the program. But Ben, tell us about CERN and the new developments there. We're all fucked. Um, no, I'm just joking. Uh, that, and that's actually oh, some, no, you're not. <laughs> that's actually the the attitude a lot of people are taking. So, uh, so for those who don't not know what CERN is, it is a huge the Large Hydron Collider. So basically, it's this massive loop that runs underneath somewhere in Switzerland that will be started up again. So this is the particular accelerator that has helped find uh, exotic quartz uh, 
are particles, in particular the the God particle, as are the boson particle, it is being refired up. So it is actually going to try to achieve a higher energy level. The initial run back in 2012 was 3.5 trillion electron volts or TeVs. The second run was about 13 TeVs. And now they're going to go for 13.6 TeVs or roughly, as they say, 6.8 TeVs per beam. This is all going down on July 12th. Now, every Hmm. time this happens, and and mind you, this is a large loop. It has a 27 kilometer circumference. Um, What's that in American? Huh? That's that roughly, American? oh God, 16, 16 miles? miles. Yeah, something like I that. Think so. 15, yeah. 16 miles, two point, it's some, what, 2.2 miles per, or 2.2 kilometers per mile or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's 2.2 pounds way. per kilogram. Fuck, I don't know. I, you know, I'm not, as, <laughs> I'm not that good with distance, ladies and gentlemen. If you give me weights, that's what I work with. Um, But so basically what this thing does is it speeds up particles to right at the speed of light. And then collides them. When these collisions occur, it, of course, causes a massive event where they split apart. And, you know, whatever the readings are that take actually, in most times, several years to confirm, will let them know about their predictions regarding certain chem- certain properties of the basic structure of the subatomic level. So, nonetheless... They're starting it up again, um, and and the conjecture around the around these particular around these particular apparatus is that it can do everything from in 2012. It altered the timeline <laughs> when it was first turned yeah, on. It, sh- it really did, right, right? And then also people were very scared, and they're still scared that it can start and open a wormhole or a black <laughs> hole. So we need 2022. 2022, we could be doing that. And also everything from you, you name it, from a new portal to hell to brand you know, new sun. You, yeah, a brand new sun. So yeah. here we go. We are starting again, but we are going to they they've already started the uh the reactor that I think it's gonna be fully up on July 12th. And they're gonna really try to see. What's happening? They're trying. They, they say that when they use more and more power, that it simulates closer and closer to the to the beginning of the Big Bang. Which, hmm. if you take that con, if you take that concept and go backwards, it's kind of like, uh, but you're like, wait, 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 the Big Bang though, that was a pretty big explosion. Yeah, even on, we, even well, even on a microscopic scale, it created the whole fucking universe. So, yeah, well, how close big, do we want to get? Right but they didn't help themselves either though so once cern was created a couple of the scientists thought it was a funny idea (laughs) they i guess they got drunk they all put on robes and acted like they were doing a human sacrifice in front of it and like it was a joke and some people took it as being serious so the scientists at cern and even cern had to address it go some of us had a party it was not very funny, the joke. But it was funny. It was, it was just you don't have a sense of humor. That's all. No, no, no. People you know freaked what? out thinking that it was the Illuminati at CERN. Yeah. So they started going like crazy about it. Like, yeah, you, know, all, you know, all the conspiracy theorists are already yeah. losing it. No, but you know what, though? Like, there's other jokes you could have made there. I don't know, bro. Like, that was pretty you, fucking why good. You, why would that you fucking good, bro. do that? Because it's awesome. Because they are trying to summon... Beelzebub. That's what I'm They're saying. trying to bring so him. It's just real. The death. Yeah. No, it might I'm just be the real. Devil. I love that. Oh, and he's, <laughs> he's going to try to fuck Cage. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So this is going on right now. So yeah, guys. If you if you guys are in if you guys are privy to any of the conspiracy groups or are actually even I think even the um the good majority of Rick's friends. What? In 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 the Republican Party, a lot of the religious freaks are kind of kind of freaking out about this oh, too really? because oh, it Why? is because it it poses like this existential crisis for them. Where first they named it the God Particle, which pissed them off enough. Now they think that you know, to the QAnon and and Jack Daniels and inbreeding yeah. that it's going to like 
you know, open a portal to hell. Like it's it there's it, this is a real sub uh, like a subcultural phenomenon where people are actually very nervous that this thing once it gets up to a certain power level could destroy our planet. I just I, I just wanted to find element one fifteen so that we can power spaceships and fly oh, out of here. That's shit. that's what I want. What was his name? What's what's that guy's fucking name? Uh, Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar. No, I yeah. Don't. Well, I mean, we're going to get closer, ladies and gentlemen, as we still don't completely understand a lot of the particles attraction, in particular gravity, but we're getting closer. We are getting closer. So a uh, big scientific that and then also maybe, just, huh? maybe they're trying to reverse a timeline. I mean, maybe they, they know they fucked up in 2012 and they're like, look, let's power it up again and see what happens. You know, like a Rick and Morty episode almost. You can't you know? do it, dude. You can't jump the timeline. You know what's going to happen? The, the machine's going to have two dots. Yeah. It only needs to be one. Remember that episode? Yeah. <laughs> There's two fucking dots. It only needs to be one fucking dot. Everyone needs to shut the fuck up and think the same thing at the same time. And do that right now. <laughs> you know the what, greatest though? episode ever, whatever. Because there's what's wrong? There's supposed to be one dot. Now there's two fucking dots. We're fucked. I love that. <laughs> that was the best episode. Ever. Everyone think the same thing. And we no. think the same thing, do the same thing at the same time. <laughs> they kept splitting and splitting and splitting. And then the, and then that weird ant creature got mad at him because he split the time. He's like, <laughs> that was the best shit ever. Anyways, continue. Yeah, sorry. But you know, just here's what I'm with the money that they're using to fund this whole thing. Right. How about this? How about just pay everybody who is involved with CERN? You know what? Just work from home, surf the internet for for eight hours a day and call it a day we'll pay you a normal salary to not reverse space time <laughs> during a situation where we have like a verge of world war three uh global supply chain issues fucking fuel prices out of control inflation yeah let's pump the brake let's just wait maybe maybe we use that extra funding um instead of recreating the fucking big bang and resetting the calculations of our entire fucking existence of reality. How about let's just chill for a minute and maybe we'll use that money to, to do other shit. We probably could use it for right now. Oh, Dude, what in the fuck? Bro, I normally roll with you on this, but I'm full send on this one. I want to see that shit. Exp- I don't, I want to see it happen. We need it. Just, and just eat like erase, like, you know, when you shut the TV off old TVs oh, and there's that, wouldn't that be white. weird? <laughs> it's just like, Oh, that's wouldn't it. that be weird? Like, like also like, you know, cause they're in Europe, right? Let's say they're starting early in the morning and we're report, we're recording that day. And all of a sudden just soup. Existence over. But I don't think that's what's going to happen, or, folks. I think a bunch of nerds happen. are going to jerk off on each other over some like you weird know what's going to happen, patterns. huh? Uh, they're going to pop this t- this this collider thing, and then um, because it's in Europe, phones will no longer go beep when you call them. It'll sound like normal American ringing. <laughs> <laughs> All these people are like, oh, I, I bloody know this is not how the phones <laughs> to sound. Yeah, because you know the, the beep is so annoying. <laughs> It's like no, just yeah. ring. Okay, you're yeah, that is phone. the shittiest thing, right? With your it is. calls, like duh, duh. you're like, why can't you ever ring? Like, why is is it ringing or is it is it telling me that some that there's a someone in the line? I don't, I don't or, get or, it. Or, or that my dinner's ready? Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I got that. That's pretty fucking funny. I bet you yeah. that is what happens. And the water, you know, in the drain in Australia is going to turn the other way. I mean, right. it's going to turn the correct way. It, it may right the clockwise, way. <laughs> clockwise, right? <laughs> it, it, may, it may fix all the ills in society. Who knows? This could be the moment we've all really been waiting for. You know, if for everyone that's been looking for a savior in the political establishment or the Supreme Court, really, we're just what they're going to do is they're going to run the particles the other way this time and fix all the shit that fucked up in 2012. But it's a big day for science. It's a big day for uh, understanding our subatomic universe much better. And who knows? Maybe we'll get some more information that will that will actually keep people from destroying each other. But also on that note, another big thing's coming up. Also on July 12th will be the first high resolution pictures from the Webb Telescope, oh. who I've been jerking y'all off for you like have a been. long time. You I mean, really I have been, been edging y'all with <laughs> yeah. this one. I mean, you're just, I get you close. Uh, no, no. I know. Yeah. When are, when are you going to uh, let, you gotta let me, you got to let me release at some point, man. This is getting brutal. 
and this release is going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, because this hey, is fucking balls. magical. I'm, I'm I just want to see purple, a picture bro. of an Earth-like planet. You show me a picture of an Earth-like planet, and I am sold. Bro. Right now, you're showing me pictures of suns. I've mm-hmm. seen suns, okay? Well, yeah, They're all right. over the fucking sky. It's resolution that yeah. counts. So, oh, right. Damn. I mean, oh, go ahead. No, finish this, but I have something uh, uh, regarding well, something I saw in the sky. Anyway, well, it's resolution. Oh, dude, yes, counts. you did. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Let me finish the fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, no, let him finish. I'm fucking sorry. Go. Yeah, no, no, no. no, I'm, I'm just sorry. joking. No, no. Go. So, nonetheless, be on the lookout for that. We're going to, I'm going to fucking geek out, probably post some shit on social media, but get ready to see high resolution pictures of a magnitude that NASA and everyone's saying we've never even comprehensibly handled. And this could be a major, major, dis- major, di- lead to major discoveries in astronomy. And guys, we may actually see ETs or at least the chemical traces now and almost verifiably. So that's pretty big shit. So continue, sir. Well, what, uh, what, uh, what did Benji, you see? Benji's put something on Instagram that, that, that will definitely lead to some, some sort of discovery because we cannot explain it. Benji, yeah, what the I, hell did you see on Instagram? I mean, on the sky that you put up so on Instagram. To, yeah, man. So, so to set the tone, um, it was 4th of July, right? We're going to bug. And I uh, had a great day. Um, worked early. So I was able to, I was off in time to, uh, you know, go to some, went to, uh, had a little family gathering, man, had some burgers, blah, 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 swam at the pool. And then at night, I was walking around uh, with my kids around the neighborhood, just checking out fireworks because we they're legal here. And uh, my neighborhood goes particularly hard in that uh, in that dimension where they always go pretty big on the fireworks. So sometimes we'll buy them. Sometimes we don't. This year I didn't. Uh, but in the area, we've had a pretty significant drought, so much so that which is, you know, it rains a fuckload here uh, in, in Houston, in the Houston area. So yeah, it's been a, a, the worst drought in like over 10 years. So, uh, fires were a very big concern. Uh, not that that's going to even remotely half of a percentage of stop these motherfuckers from lighting these things. So it was full, full go. So in other words, the skies were filled. That's what I was trying to say. It was a beautiful night, wonderful weather. Skies were filled with explosions and shit and pop, 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 pop helicopters probably looking for fires because that was like i said a major concern uh, so much so that two days before like a pre fourth of july celebration um i mean literally within a mile of my fucking house uh this church the field caught on fire like major wow so, so it was like a big deal like fires were definitely a fucking concern so there was fucking helicopters everywhere but one thing i saw and i got it on camera um maybe if if somebody knows skip the noise podcast at gmail.com or or on instagram at skip underscore the underscore noise underscore podcast (laughs) hit me up and tell me what the fuck this is because it looked like a shooting star but it wasn't because it was like multi it was like navigating itself maybe it was a drone with fucking fireworks blazing off the back no dude it looked like a I don't know. I don't know. No, it looked like a comet or something, like a, like an asteroid coming down, like a small little meteorite. Yeah, with but the it tail. Like, it was like, but it was itself, moving though. around. Yeah, it, was, it, 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 wasn't it curved just, upward, and then it's yeah. it looks like it stayed still, right? Yeah, it changed directions. It changed direction, um, but it, did it move, or was it moving very slow? Yeah, and I it's weird because I haven't seen. Yeah, it was moving. It wasn't like slow, uh, and I'll probably repost because I think I put it on the story. Uh, I'll actually post it since we mentioned it on the show. Um, of what I was talking about and, and throw some cute hashtags and see if anybody knows what the fuck this thing is. Um, you know, I try, dude. I'm we're, we're <laughs> try so, my best, man. So, uh, so cute. Get, but anyway, um, yeah, I genuinely didn't know what the fuck this was. Like I said, I, the only, like just trying to play the, the odds and the most realistic s- explanation would be like, yeah, maybe it was a fucking drone with some sort of firework uh set to like debt and i don't know like but holy fuck it was weird like, oh yeah for sure <laughs> you know i don't know what it was so I, i'm curious to find out what this was now it, obviously i don't think it was a goddamn extraterrestrial flying a fucking spacecraft but it was definitely 
uh, unidentified. It was a UAP to me because <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck this aerial phenomena was. I'd like to know though. Solve that mystery. So it's, maybe all. Ben, did, let me ask you: Did you think it was a meteorite? The way you were looking at it, because it looked like it had a tail. So check it, it out. That's up. what that, that's what I initially thought. Because there's been times where I used to work really early in the morning, so when I drove. Uh, it was still dark outside. And at the time I had a friend that worked for NASA. And I remember one day on the way to work at like three something in the morning, because I'd clocked in at four this years ago, but I saw uh, something fall from the sky with like five, like a me, it looks like a meteor yeah. right? or, or like space debris. I don't know what it was, but I was like, well, it was weird. So I asked my friend and, uh, that was his ex. He's like, yeah, sometimes stuff like either satellites, space debris, sometimes it'll fall or it could have satellites. Been, been like a yeah, satellites. Um, falling in the atmosphere. So, but the, what made this different, what I saw was that it was changing directions in the air. Oh yeah. So that rules out um, meteors. Yeah. Meteors. Cause it would have gone in one direction, you know, Typically. Straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was a, like, you know, maybe they're doing like a firecracker show or something at a park and then it was an exploded and it, it curved, but I would go with that theory. But the thing is, it looked like it stopped in your video. It looked like it paused for a little bit and then it kept going real slow. Well, it's a smart meteor. <laughs> like it's yeah. part of a, uh, it's a smittier either that or that's meteor Amazon. for president. Oh, it's that Amazon's new yeah, shit. It was That's fucking they, win. I'll tell you that right now. They're trying to solve the supply <laughs> chain issues. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I think it's supply chain related. I think somebody. I, I think it could be. I, I think you do. I think you just witnessed something that was extraordinary. Who knows, Ben? You may you may have seen our, have. Our, 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 our celestial gods trying to to, to tell everyone it's going to be okay. Maybe they wanted to gift you with that moment of solace. Who knows? But Or maybe it's going to be like in that movie uh, with John Travolta. Oh, boy. Uh, where Which he sees one? a meteorite. He's really the, ones where he's, the one he's in a cowboy outfit? No. <laughs> no. Urban cowboy? <laughs> or, or is the one where he's dancing a lot? And, and uh, that's no, that's, that's not stupid. The movie, Michael. Because um, those are see. the only two that matter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or the one where he's wearing a suit. Yeah, urban urban suit. yeah, continue. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saturday Night Fever, Urban Cowboy, <laughs> Cowboy. Pulp Fiction, Pulp anything Fiction. else? Fuck. Is... Okay, well, remember that K Pax? Or wait, was he in Face Off? Phenomenon. That's yes. a movie. Phenomenon. Phenomenon is it? He, yes. he, but he was in Face Off, right? Yes, he was. Totally okay, so never off. mind. Face Off counts too. That counts. Yes, fucking right. Face Off's one of the greatest cinematic oh. uh, treasures of our society. Oh, but um, is that in Con Air? Oh, Con Con and he, wait, 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 was he in Con Air? That's no, not close. No, 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 you're, not, you're, you're going it, it came at the same time. It came at the same time. Oh, okay. I was about to say, what are we doing now? Yeah, going off the road. Road. But John Travolta and Phenomena a so he's dude. a meteorite and then he becomes super smart. So Benji, maybe that might be you. you know? Well, you know what? You know what? Well, check this out. So before we 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 let you guys go, isn't that how your penis was born? Like you were just <laughs> yeah, right. you were it's a child, extra, right, Rick? Supernatural. You were oh, a child <laughs> laying in a in a in a in a in like your fucking baby bassinet, and then this meteorite just fucking just nails you right in the mads, and and somehow bestowed upon you the gift of this, <laughs> of this powerful <laughs> celestial like. You know, yeah, there was something sword. in that powder. No, there was something I, in that rock, man. I, I heard. Was. I heard the legend of uh, Rick was that he, he was floating in a little bassinet like uh, Moses did, but it was on the, <laughs> the, the Rio Grande River. <laughs> I heard he's just floating <laughs> and, on his own. Uh, and he was, it, yeah, dude. And it was, yeah. But it was like a, um, you know, uh, a family of snakes embraced him, oh, and and that's how he I was. Get you. But that's that's how, he was wrapped in his own dick. That's like, you how, know, like how yeah, Moses how was in a basket. Yeah. They just wrapped his dick around right. him, and just said, oh, "It was Moses." You go, little did baby. Even, did I just make that shit up? Did they so. throw Mo. I, I like <laughs> that. I think that's where you're going. Or am I thinking of Perseus from Clash of the Titans? One of those, bro, like, but you're going biblical or for sure. I don't know. Dude. I think it's happening. But anyway, um, but check this out. Uh, shout out to the Skip the Noise Running Club, which actually exists despite its minuscule, uh, uh, you know, nature, microscopic membership, as it were. But it exists, 
and I thought of this today. So before we end the show, I just wanted to, this has been something that in one form or another has been in, some, in my head uh, since I was like probably 15 and my brain figured out a fucking way to make it happen. I believe, I believe in this shit, but my brain made it happen. Eventually it took me getting a podcast and uh, after two years, but it just, you know how like little ideas wiggle their way out and it might take them a couple of decades, but by God, it's a real thing. It's free to join. You just got to go out there. And I tell you, I was telling Ben before the show, since I committed myself, I was already kind of doing this already, but like, because I made it a thing and put it, uh, announced it on the, the podcast, I forced myself to kind of like, Hey, if I'm going to talk it, I better live it like to the extent. So I've taken it a step further. And in the last couple of weeks, dude, I've been finding all these crazy places. Like I run almost exclusively on grass or natural train or whatever. I only walk on concrete to get to the other place or whatever, like however I'm getting where I'm going, but I go in different directions and I don't have any kind of mapped out route. I just keep going every day. It's been different. I found all this like weird, crazy shit, like all these little lost spots in the woods where there's like sketchy fucking chairs with graffiti on them. I found like whole, like probably I'm on probably trespassing private property, but I've taken some really gorgeous photos and found all this cool shit on the other side of the fucking freeway. But yeah, I have to go like underneath the shit. I don't know. It's a thing. Skip the hashtag. If you're going to post it, uh, you know, share it. But just hashtag skip the noise running club. Uh, and also, if you would tag the show, uh, but tell your friends about the show, too. We're really um, I was really de- we were talking about dehydration. I was really dehydrated this morning, man. And it really fucks with your mentals. And I really was like not in a good place. <laughs> and I was not a- looking forward to recording tonight. I'll be honest. I'm just going to go free. I don't know why. I just was not. In- and then later on the day, I think I re. I think I started drinking more water and ate some food and I felt better. And then I had the realization, fuck dude, I'm run- <laughs> I'm doing these long ass fucking crazy runs in the hundred degree heat. I probably should drink more water. I think that's what's going on. So make sure you drink a lot of water. That was my message yes, there. I fucking feel you. And with that PSA, <laughs> I had to, had to drop the PSA. I think, uh, what is it? The, oh yeah. Please like, like Ben stated, please, please, please leave us some type of fucking reviews, good or bad. Um, and also at the same time, hit us up. If you want us to talk about anything particular, if you want us to go, you know, we could, we would gladly do a show where if you guys had a idea or even if you wanted to do something, maybe where we even record live, we, we, we record yeah. live, but maybe broadcast and guys can call in. So, uh, definitely please leave reviews, please, uh, tell your friends and, uh, we'll see you guys on later. So keep it real represent. Peace.